Hello, I'm Ollie, and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, none of the above. Today, it's another entry in my library tour, um, and it's a box of what I've labelled as general books. So we'll see what this box holds. Um, as I said in the intro, I labelled I've labelled it as general, which basically means some of it will be kind of what what you would see on the shelves of a bookshop as a general fiction. Um, some of it will just be stuff that doesn't fit into um, the categories that most of my boxes are, i.e., crime, horror, pulp, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we'll see what's in here. There's all sorts. These are all books um, that I have read. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. Um, so first up, we have. Um, a Romance, so The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie um, by Jennifer Ashley. So I did a reading vlog um, on this one. It's a, a Regency romance um, with a neurodiverse hero um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's got a bit of a mystery going on in it as well. Um, so yeah, a very entertaining read. Uh, next up, uh, so a bit of historical fiction. So Master and Commander by Patrick O'Brien, the first of the Aubrey and Maturin novels. Um, so a thoroughly enjoyable um, naval adventure um, with a couple of great characters um, at its centre. Loads of um, quite intricate detail about um, ships and things like that, which could be boring, but actually um, O'Brien makes it really work and it makes for a fascinating book. And I've got quite a few more of these in, in one of my unread boxes, um, which I'll be getting to at some point. Uh, right, a book I hated, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, so I'm part of a, a book club and we pick a book each month to read. This was epic um, at some point last year. Um, it's kind of a magical realism um, story about a woman who um, has, is attempting to commit suicide um, and goes to this magical library um, where she can take books from the shelves that show her the way her life might have gone. Um, it's all very um, kind of heartwarming and awful um, and I really didn't like it. Um, right, some of these are a bit wedged in. Right, let's go with this one next. So this could this could be put in a science fiction box, um, but it isn't. So it's one Q eight four by Murakami. Um, so this is a. If you've not read this book, you should read this book. I think it's an absolutely fantastic book. It's actually a, a trilogy in one volume, so it's it's incredibly long. How long is it? It's like thirteen hundred pages. Um, but it's just fantastic. I, I won't even try and describe what it's about because it's impossible to, but it's a, a, an absolutely amazing book. Um, I loved it. Um, I thought it was brilliant. It's, it was a, a definite five-star read for me. Um, I've only read a couple of other books by him, a couple of his early novellas, which I didn't like nearly as much. Um, so I'm glad I started with this one. People warned me not to start with this one because it's so big, um, but I'm glad I did because I think I might not have read it if I hadn't read, if, if I'd read the other two things I've read by him first. Um, yeah, it's, it's masterful. Um, next up, um, The Painted Bird by Josie Kaczynski. Um, so this is a famously horrible and disturbing book um, about a young guy or young boy um, traveling across war-torn Europe. Um, has some absolutely horrific scenes in it. Um, I think there was a bit of controversy um, when it came out, because I think Kaczynski had kind of suggested it was based on, you know, it was kind of autobiographical um, and based on his experience of the Holocaust, which I think turned out not really to be true, um, but still a very powerful, um, moving and disturbing book. Um, now for something completely different. Um, the Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller. So this was in, I think this was in one of um, Michael K. Vaughan's books that time forgot. Um, series recently and he said it was one of the worst books he'd ever read or at least one of the books he most disliked I don't really remember very much about it um, I think I thought it was okay but it, I think it's very cliched I think that the kind of hero this kind of who's kind of a photographer who smokes camel cigarettes and wears a, a denim jacket and is really cool um, I thought was a was a bit much um, but yeah it's it's not not my normal kind of thing at all um, but yeah I think I think I thought it was okay Right, let's grab a few more. So, next up, another piece of historical fiction, uh, Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. 
Um, so it's a, a really wonderful book um, about Japan in the is it 19th century? Oh no, early 20th century. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was fantastic. Really rich, really colourful, really sucks you in and, and makes you feel like you're experiencing, um, you know, you're experiencing a, a historical time period. Um, so yeah, I've never seen the film, but I thought the book was was lovely. Next up, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So uh, the, everyone, when I first started doing booktube, I kept on watching videos where people were going on about dark, dark academia and I didn't really understand what it was, but I think this is probably the book that started the dark academia craze. So this is a book I tried to read multiple times. Um, I remember when I was at university, someone I knew whose opinion I quite respected going on about what a fantastic book it was. And I tried to read it then and just couldn't get into it at all. Um, but more recently, about three or four years ago, I read it and, and I agree with him. It is an excellent book. Um, so she's got quite a dense um, prose style, um, which takes a bit of getting into. But once I got into it, um, I absolutely loved it. So a, a very good, intelligent mystery. Uh, next up, American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. So this is a copy I've had um, since it first came out in paperback, um, which was in the... When did it come out? 1991 so yeah I read this when I was 18 um, I think I read it in a weekend and was kind of amazed by it in terms of how gripping and horrible and um, kind of darkly satirical it is um, yeah I don't know what to say <laughs> you've, it, it, you've either read it or you know it by reputation um, I've just opened it and looking looking inside it I've got a um, a clipping from a newspaper um, that I obviously cut out at the time um, about the book so yeah I'll have to have a look at that and see what it is later on um, but yeah a, a, an excellent book but definitely very very horrible uh, right much less horrible um, so I said in a video a while ago I can't remember which one it was it was one of the it was like a tag video where oh no it was my Q&A where people were asking about did did I um, did did I come from a family of readers and I said in that that my mum always sends me books and they're usually awful and I don't enjoy them. So this is one she sent me and I really like this. So this is a quite gentle, um, very moving um, kind of, it's, it's not really a historical novel, but it's a, a novel set in the past um, about the relationship between a young guy and an older woman. Um, and it's just, it's just a really lovely book and beautifully written. Um, so yeah, I didn't tell what it was, did I? The Offing by Benjamin Myers. I've got a couple of other books by him. Um, which I'm quite looking forward to reading, having read this. I thought it was excellent. Next up, another excellent book, um, The Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon, um, which I just thought was a, a wonderful book. So about these two Jewish um, comic book writers in the States in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, it starts in 1939. Um, with, you know, the background to um, their, their experiences in Europe as well. Um, just just wonderful, just such an enjoyable, but memorable and meaningful book. Um, I thought it was an excellent and a very worthy winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Cool, I'm bringing out all these books which are vaguely intelligent. It's not, it's not like me, is it? Um, right, what's next? A bit of non-fiction. Um, so, uh, One Summer, American 1927 by Bill Bryson. I think that this is the only Bill Bryson book I've read. I've definitely got some other ones on my Kindle. Um, so this is fascinating. It's a, a non-fiction book about what it says. So it's about America in the summer of 1927 um, and just about all the things that happened and how the, you know, how many kind of important things happened that then went on to shape the world. Um, so, yeah, a fascinating piece of, uh, of non-fiction. It's quite long. It's kind of 600 plus pages long, um, but really gripping and entertaining and interesting. And it was one of those books I, I enjoyed every page of, I think. Um, right, let's do some more non-fiction. Uh, so, What If by Randall Munro, um, famous for doing the XKCD um, comic strip. Um, so this is a um, a very interesting kind of pop science book um, about, uh, basically it's people asking him random questions about what if this thing happened. Um, and he being quite scientifically minded comes up with um, well-researched answers. It's, it's very nerdy, it's very enjoyable, it's very, very funny at times, but also really interesting because of the, the kind of scientific element. Uh, what should we bring out next? Right, let's go with another bit of non-fiction. Um, so, Touching the Void by Joe Simpson, which is about a climbing disaster, uh, which is, the, the, there's a movie of it as well, which is excellent. It's just really, really gripping. Um, and fascinating as well because of the detail he goes into about, you know, the, the sport of climbing. Um, 
I know that um, Steve Donoghue's not, not a big fan of climbers, so I wonder if he's read this, but I thought it was a, a really excellent book. Uh, right, more kind of vaguely intelligent stuff. I don't, know, I don't know what's happening here. So Perfume by Patrick Suskind, which is a kind of a horror novel, but a very intelligent horror novel um, about a killer who harvests people's smells, um, which I, I haven't read this for years. I read it probably not long after it came out. Um, this wasn't, this isn't the edition I originally had. Um, I, I do need to reread it because I remember it being deeply creepy and beautifully written as well. Um, Oh, a bit more general fiction, but kind of horror. Um, we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Man, this is a good book. Um, I, I was blown away by this book. It's it's just so well written, and it has a number of tricks up its sleeve, which it, it which she she just disguises beautifully. Um, very moving, very horrible, just a stunning piece of fiction. Um, Shriver has ended up so she's American, but lives in the UK now and gets trotted out on um, on current affairs programmes over here every so often to give her um, somewhat right-wing views about things. So I'm, I'm less of a fan of her, of her as a person um, as I am of her as a writer, but I thought this was a truly, truly excellent novel. Uh, next up, Fight Club by Chuck... I don't even know how you pronounce his name. Chuck Palahniuk? Palahniuk? I don't know. You know who, you know who wrote it anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's it's... Fight Club. I, I think I, I think I enjoyed it when I read it. I think my view on it has probably changed over time. So maybe I need to reread it and still see it, see if I do still like it or not. I suspect I wouldn't like it as much if I read it now. Um, but yeah, it's you know I don't really need to say much about it, do I? It's uh, it's Fight Club. Um, another one which is reasonably well known. Actually, I've got two of this author's books. So Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Um, which was great. I really liked this. So much so, in fact, that I also bought um, Everything I Never Told You by her, which I also really enjoyed. So, again, not my normal kind of thing, um, but I thought these were both very interesting, moving, um, you know, kind of that, that kind of general fiction type thing. Um, you know, books about families and emotions and stuff like that, which is, you know, not the kind of thing I normally go for, um, but I did think both of these were very good. Um... In a similar vein, um, A Little Life by uh, Hanya Yanagahara, um, which was, again, I thought was excellent. I thought better than better than those other two books I just talked about. But yeah, I thought this was a phenomenal book. Deeply, deeply moving. I have talked about it on a video before. I can't remember which one. But yeah, such an, such an incredibly moving human book. Um, I loved it. Uh, right, next up, The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. So I, I didn't love this. I thought it was good, but I didn't love it. Um, I much preferred his book, The Nickel Boys, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, this, which is the one that, you know, tends to get all the attention. I thought it was good, but I didn't, it didn't blow me away the way The Nickel Boys did. Uh, what's next? A classic. So Brighton Rock by Graham Greene. Um, so I live very near Brighton and used to work in Brighton. I live a few miles away on the on the south coast of England. Um, so this was, you know, fascinating to read because of that. It's a book I had to read at school, so I studied it for A level, um, and didn't particularly like it um, back then. But reread it recently, and, and it is fantastic. Um, Pinky, who's the the villain, is such a fantastic villain, such a, a wonderful, wonderfully convincing um, portrait of a psychopath. Um, and the woman in it, whose name I forget now. Ida is is brilliant as well. This kind of brassy woman who's determined to um, to get to the bottom of what's going on. Um, so yeah, a really excellent book and justifiably a classic. Um, next up, The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. Um, so uh, again, um, something a bit different from the kind of thing I normally read. I guess it's kind of got a supernatural edge to it. Um, but yeah, I, again, I thought this was a, a very good and moving book and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, what should we do next? Right, I'm just going to grab a pile and see what we get. Um, so, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chubosky, um, which I really liked. And I saw a lot of myself in, in this book, if I'm honest. So, you know, I've said before that I'm very introverted. Um, I definitely am. And, you know, the experiences of the, um, the, the kind of neurodiverse um, hero of this book 
um, definitely rang true with me about you know my own teenage years. So um, a very moving um, and affecting um, story of kind of coming of age. Um, but oh gosh, another very moving book. This book nearly destroyed me. Goodness. Um, One Day by Dagan Nichols. So this is a, a, a romance book about a kind of on again, off again relationship between a, a, a male and female friend, um, which has th probably the most moving ending I've ever read in any book. Um, it's it, insanely moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm choking up just thinking about it. So I'm going to put that book down and stop talking about it. I'm in danger of having a toppling pile in a minute, I think. So I might pause the video um, to rearrange things in a second. Um, next up, so you probably know this book, The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Oh man, I love this book. Um, such a great book and such a great companion piece to the film. Um, so obviously this, this came first, but if you've not read the book, it mixes the, the plot of the film and the story of the film um, with this completely different story about a guy who's obviously kind of supposed to be Goldman, who's a screenwriter in Hollywood, who I think is going through a divorce and just about what's going on in his life. Um, but how he remembers this story that he was read um, as a child, which is the story of The Princess Bride. Um, so, yeah, a fantastic book. Um, and, it, and it prompts me to think of, and I've forgotten the name of it now, but um, Carrie Elwes has written a fantastic book um, about the filming of um, The Princess Bride, which was a really joyous, lovely book. Um, if I remember, I'll put a, um, I'll put a subtitle up um, to say what it was called. But, yeah, I thoroughly recommend that as well. Uh, right, another very moving one. So The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger, um, which is uh, perhaps just a lovely book. This is a book I tried to read ages ago um, and and struggled with it for, for kind of personal reasons because of some of the things that were going on in the book were things that were going on in my own life at the same time. Um, so put it down, but then reread it or reattempted to read it more recently and really enjoyed it. So uh, I've fascinating time travel story and um, very cleverly told um, and you know a lovely romance at the center of it as well so yeah a very good book but well, i'm going to pause the video here and just rearrange things so i don't get um, buried in an avalanche right i have averted almost certain disaster um so moving on uh, we've got two brothers by ben elton so i don't know how well known ben elton is um in the rest of the world outside of the uk um, so he's a comedian, probably best known internationally for having been one of the creators of the, the TV show The Young Ones from the 80s, um, who has gone on to write a series of novels which are, I guess, I, I, you, you could, I, I, I might argue that they're a little bit wanky, um, to use a, a term I've used before, um, but this, this was actually really good. So it's a, um, a, a kind of popular history novel um, about two brothers, as the title suggests, um, growing up in Nazi Germany. Um, and about what happens to them. So Elton is, is Jewish. Um, so, you know, it's clearly a very meaningful subject for him. And it's just a, a very enjoyable, um, but moving um, and gripping um, uh, historical novel. Uh, next up, um, The Collective Works of Nathaniel West. So I read this as a teen and absolutely loved it. Um, and recently picked up this copy. Um, which I so need to reread it. And actually, it occurs to me that some of the stories in here um, are, some of the novels in here are quite short. So maybe I should read it for my 100 book challenge. Um, so it's got The Day of the Locust, which I think is his most famous book, um, which is about about Hollywood. Um, it's got The Dream Life of Balso Snell, which I can't remember uh, anything about at all. Um, it's got Miss Lonely Hearts, which is a great book, a, a, short, like a short novel um, about a woman who's an agony aunt. Um, and A Cool Million, which is fantastic, which is about, um, if I remember rightly, is about this guy. Um, it's kind of a um, rags to riches story um, about this guy who, who ends up um, variously losing body parts, if I remember rightly. Um, so, yeah, West is a, a I think from the, I think these are all from the 30s. Let me double check. Yeah. So, yeah, from the from the 30s. Um, and I think these I think he only wrote these four novels. Um, but yeah, very entertaining, um, if you like that kind of thing. And a, a lovely cover as well. Uh, next up, Washington Black by Isi Edugian, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope I am. Uh, this is a really good book. Uh, so it's it's a bit like Two Brothers, actually, in that it's kind of, it's one of those historical novels that's just a really great story um, about this, um, this freed slave, um, and this uh, scientist who he becomes friends with 
Um, it's a really, a really gripping um, kind of adventure story, um, but a fantastic story about slavery and things like that as well. So a, a very good book. Next up, so this is a book I read as a teenager um, and it had a big impact on me at the time. So Zoe by Dirk Whittenborn. Um, it's a book I got out of the library, which if I remember rightly is about a young woman um, kind of trying to find her fortune in, in Hollywood, in the, in the entertainment industry. Um, and I really, really loved it as a teenager. Um, I was, you know, it's, it, you know what, you, what it's like when you're a teenager. Sometimes you just bomb with something um, and it feels like it was written for you. And this was one of those books. I've got no idea if it's actually any good or not. Um, I bought this copy fairly recently um, and will reread it at some point. Um, but I mean, it's one of those books I'm slightly reluctant to reread because I worry that I'm not going to like it as much. Uh, next up, um, Spark Milligan, uh, Rommel Gunnar which is, I think, the second... Um, yeah, the second of his World War Two memoirs. So Milligan, again, I don't know how famous he is or how well known he is internationally. So a British comedian who was part of uh, the Goons, along with uh, Peter Sellers, who obviously is, is a lot better known. Um, so a very, very funny guy. It suffered terribly from um, depression, um, but he wrote a series of books, I think there's four or five of them, um, about his experiences as a soldier in the Second World War, which are great, really, really interesting. So very, very funny at times, very bawdy at times. Um, also quite racist at times, it must be said, so they're definitely of their time. Um, but um, very interesting and, and entertaining as well. Uh, next up, another um, harrowing book. There's been a few of those. Um, so My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent, which is kind of a revenge story, um, but it, it, it deserves to be read. If you've not read it, it's a really excellent book, but it is it comes with many trigger warnings um, and is, is very disturbing, um, but also incredibly gripping and very, very well written. Uh, another classic, uh, so Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, um, the kind of excellent prescient science fiction novel. Um, which, you know, feels, a lot of the things he writes about in here feel so familiar, um, you know, living in the 21st century. So um, a, a very, very good book. Another classic next, We've Always Lived in Castle by Shirley Jackson. Um, so I, I think I kind of prefer Jackson's short short stories to her novels, but this is still excellent. Very, very weird, um, very enjoyable. Um, and what's the heroine's name? Um, doesn't say on the back. That's annoying. She's just listed as Constance, but she's got she's got like a funny nickname, doesn't she? Um, but yeah, I thought this was great and, and enjoyably creepy. And then to end with, two books by um, the same author, both of which I really like. Um, so Vox and The Fermata um, by Nicholson Baker, which are both kind of very, very intelligent, dirty books, <laughs> I would say. So Vox is about, um, it's kind of about a, a phone conversation and, and phone sex. Um, and the Fermata, I can't remember if I've spoken about this book or not before. It's kind of science fiction. In that it's about a guy who can, um, who can freeze time for everybody else, but not for him, with the, with the power of his mind. Um, but rather than using that power as a, as a Marvel superhero would for good, um, he uses it to pose people in kind of sexually titillating um, positions for his own amusement. Um, so, yeah, very strange books, both of them. Um, but yeah, quite quite rude, um, but I think brilliantly written. I think Baker's a very, very good writer. So yeah, that was my general fiction box. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit different from the kind of stuff I normally share on the channel. Um, so do let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of the books. Um, and as always, I hope you are keeping safe and well, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.